The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Listen-only mode, dude. Imagine if it was just like that at the office. You could just put all your uh, co-workers on listen-only mode. You could get a lot done. That would be awesome. It would. Just to go around from office to office and just say, hey, look, you're in listen-only mode. I have to press star nine when you can start talking again. <laughs> We're going to show people so, how to put Google uh, Google on listen-only mode here, right? So did you... Uh... <laughs> Was that for a Do you remember the time, when was it, like, when, would, when did I start trying to lose weight? Like two months ago? A month ago? Must have been two months ago. So when I went to the gym and I had my short, my shirt, I had everything that was mine except for I had my 10-year-old shorts. But, you know, I had, I'd been, like, really looking forward to going to the gym and getting it going. And... I, I felt like I had no choice, so that first day, I, I pulled that shirt down as far as I could go, and I wore my really super tight 10-year-old shorts. And I'll tell you, it wasn't really embarrassing. I mean, I'm sure it was for the people who saw it, but I actually got going. Now I'm, you know, I'm down nine pounds. So today, after, at five, I decided I would go to the gym before this call. And I got there, and I got everything out. And this time, you know, as if, you know, you're supposed to learn lessons in life. This time I had my, my 10-year-old shirt in my bag, not my shirt. <laughs> and I put it on, and I've only lost 9 pounds. I haven't lost 90. So there was no chance I was going to wear that. So I did not get to wear, to work out for this particular call. So well, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what that says. Either your, uh, your son, which I know he's not that big. Um, and you have uh, a small waistline, or uh, you have a much bigger chest. I don't know what that says about your manhood, but well, I'm gonna tell you that <laughs> we'll leave that alone. He can no longer <laughs> he can no longer wear the shorts because <laughs> they are big now. But the shirt, there's no way I could pull my shorts high enough to cover my shirt. I just looked like Urkel at that point. You have you have issues with packing luggage, so. Well, you know what it was is I got two shirts at at pod camp because Cameron came and hung out with me at the registration table. So I got him like a large or a medium or whatever it was. So, you know, when I'm folding, I just, it just looked like mine. I put it in my bag. I didn't, I didn't think about it. I'm a dad. I don't, you know, I don't think about those kinds of things. Well, so, so yeah, no, no workout today. No worries. Well, let's do a quick uh, sound check, and then we can go ahead and get started. Can you guys hear the uh, silly banter? Sound check, everything sound okay? How close are we? Is it time? It is time. Holy moly. So, why don't you go ahead and... Get in the uh, water? Jump in the water, yes. I'm getting myself a water. This is a Fiji, straight out of the fridge. Why we buy Fiji in my office all the time, I have no idea. There's supposedly some sort of recession going on, but we've decided that Fiji is perfect to meet the needs of this recession. So tonight, free weekly mastermind call number 428B is how to recover from the Google Penguin disaster. Now, this disaster wasn't nearly as traumatic as Panda was last year for many companies. At least I haven't seen any big companies come out. But a whole lot of people lost a whole lot of traffic, including me, and I'm going to show you uh, show you my site. I lost one of my sites. I lost a bunch of traffic on it. Um, I've already started to get a little bit back, but, you know, this stuff takes time. So we're going to show you a 14-step recovery plan. I just put 13 because I added an extra step after I was done with that. So that's what we're going to get to. Um, do we already have questions? Am I seeing that? Should I just go and won't worry about them? No, that's just people that can hear. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll jump in every once in a while. All right, so I'll just go. That's cool. All right, so let's get to the meat of it, recovering from Google Panda. All right, so this is what we're going to cover. First of all, don't panic because we are uh, business owners. These are things that we can't overcome. We're going to cover assessing what you lost. Uh, we really need a pretty 
a pretty good, I don't want to say a definition, but let's get pretty pretty particular about what it is that we lost, what keywords did we lose, all that stuff. Um, and then we're going to go on after we figured out what we lost. We're going to figure out of that, what of that had value. So, you know, I've got a couple of clients that uh, that have a lot of traffic for keywords that are of no value to them. They made like one post, you know, last year and then randomly a post this year that linked to it. And now all of a sudden they get a bunch of traffic for something that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. It's not related. It was just sort of a random thought. So the audience isn't right. It's just not important. So we're going to assess whether or not that makes a difference uh, in moving forward. Do we need to try to get that back? Do we need to get back uh, traffic that didn't matter? Now for those of you with impression networks and you're making money on the number of views, we'll talk about that too. But uh, from a business standpoint, uh, an impression network is nice, but if you're relying on it, uh, this is the kind of problem that you can have. So once we get done with the assessment, we're going to... We're going to take action. We're going to take two separate steps. We're going to take the defensive route, and we're going to take the offensive route. Uh, defense meaning let's figure out what Google didn't like and fix it. And offense, uh, let's do all the things right going forward, even if they're the same as we were doing in the past, and I'll get more into that. And then finally, uh, we're going to talk about a success plan moving forward. So these kinds of problems aren't that really that big a problem. Oh, look at that fancy animation. All right, so here's what we want to know for sure. Well, April 24th and 25th, those are the days that, uh, that, that Penguin was released, Google Penguin. So you need to figure out, is your drop in traffic related directly to Google Penguin? So you need to go to your analytics and bring up the month of April and look, did the traffic dip on the 24th and 25th and not come back? If it occurred on the 21st, or the 20th, or the 28th, then you have a different issue. We can talk about that too, but it's not the same issue. Um, we also want to go uh, look at your money. Where is your money coming from? Your product sales, your AdSense, your Amazon income. Did it dip on the 24th? If it did, if you, if your traffic dipped on the 24th, but your income did not, then do we have a problem? Let's discuss that. It, does it matter? Do we need to go straight to the action plan and stop with the defense because Google got rid of useless traffic and kept your good traffic? Um, and I need you to pull up your webmaster tools, um, which I'm going to show you. Uh, maybe we'll show you that right now. So your your webmaster tools is – now, if you don't have webmaster tools, if you're not using it, then this part is going to be useful for the next Google algorithm because you really need to have – uh, Google Webmaster Tools looking at your site. And what it is is, for some reason, long ago, Google Analytics included X, Y, and Z, and Google Webmaster Tools did A, B, and C, and they never merged. I think they're still working on merging them, but they didn't merge. And I want to show you how valuable the information is in there, more so than analytics for what we're doing. Um, so then once you do steps one, two, and three, we're going to uh, sort and analyze. Let me see if I need to go directly to that. So let's do that. I'm going to do the Alt tab. So you have a, and we're going to go to Chrome. All right. So this is Google.com/slash/webmaster-tools. And when I went in there, uh, it had my list of sites. Now, if you don't have Webmaster Tools, then you're going to go here, um, and you're let's just say you're using a WordPress site. And you're going to want to get the WordPress plugin called uh, Analytics and Webmaster Tools that you can get both the analytics code and the Webmaster Tools code on your site. If you do have Webmaster Tools, this is going to rock. Um, otherwise, you're going to really enjoy what you can do, what you can learn, and you're going to need to get that on your site as soon as possible. I'm not sure how far back the information will go if you install it today or if it verifies it today. Um, but really, all it is is code you just put somewhere on your site. And you can go through that process on your own. Or as I always say, YouTube is your friend. You can look up uh, how do I get webmaster tools on my site, search for it on YouTube, and there will be 6,000 videos showing you exactly how to do it. So the first thing that we're going to do is, what were we talking about? We were talking about your keywords. We're going to look at our keywords. So we're going to go to traffic and search queries. Now, search queries, 
down here is going to tell you, let me sort by average position right here, average position, is going to tell you all of the keywords that people are searching for and finding your site, and it's going to tell you where they are. I am number one, so that means I'm on page one, number one for Big Mac menu somewhere. I just searched for it a few minutes ago. I, I didn't find it. So um, doesn't mean that if I searched for it later, I wouldn't find it, but I didn't find it today. So 1.3, that means I'm not quite number two on page one. I'm not quite number one. I'm somewhere coming up between those two. So here, number two, you can see all the way through, all the numbers all the way through one through 10 are all the keywords that I'm on the first page of Google for. Now this is gonna be for you too. So what we want to do is we want to download this table. Oh wait, 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 no we don't. We don't wanna do that yet. What we want to do is we want to change the date. So this says April 9th, now the problem was April 24th, correct? So I want to change this to, we're gonna go April 9th to, I don't, it doesn't matter, April 13th. All right. So now we're gonna download the table. There we go. And we're gonna open it up. I know this part's tedious, but I'll tell you, this is gonna be very helpful once you do this for yourself. We want to delete impressions, change, clicks, change, click through rate, change. Delete, we wanna get rid of change. Delete. All right, now. Now I have a list of all the keywords. I'm gonna sort by this one, column B. Average position, I'm going to go ascending, meaning going up, there. So if I go down to number 10, 10 right there, you can see for 144 keywords, I was on page one of Google prior to Panda. So let's go to the top, why can't my you know what it is, it's this, uh, oh man, it's the, you can't see it, but my little dashboard for the webinars getting in the way of my navigation. All right, so I'm gonna write before Panda, or Penguin, sorry. I know I'm gonna say that like 80 times. And we're gonna go back to Webmaster Tools, and we are going to change this. Oh, let's change the last one first. So there's the date, 24th, 25th. So let's change this to May 1st, and let's change this to the 25th. There you go. Now we're going to download the table. I'm telling you, this part's a little bit tedious, but you're gonna enjoy it when we figure this all this out. We're going to get rid of all that stuff again. We're going to delete that. Now again, I have a list of keywords. I'm gonna sort by average persisting ascending. What did I have, 144 on page one before the change? Now, 88. 88. 88 is not 104, is it? So I'm going to copy this, and I'm gonna bring it over here, paste it, so now they are side by side. How good is that? Now we got the before and we got the after. A-F-T-E-R, penguin. In fact, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make them yellow. After is yellow, remember that, because I probably won't. All right, now, there's a little something special you have to do for this, for you to be able to figure this out. Because some of these have no rank, it doesn't say where we were on Google, it doesn't say what page we came up on, you need to put a thousand. You can put a million, it doesn't matter. We just need a big number that, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, come on. That's a lot. How many does it? Look at that. All right. And then over here, we also want to put a thousand because now, now the way that I did that, in case you didn't see that, was when you when you put a number in a cell and you click on this little thing, this little tiny little uh, square, um, it'll drag whatever whatever you want. It is kind of like a little super cheat. It's awesome. If you like Excel, you'll love that, that little thing. Write the word Monday in there and drag it and it will just type out the days of the week in, su in successive cells. All right, now. now, now that we have that part done, we're going to, whoops. We're gonna go to the bottom.
bottom. Shift. We're going to copy. And we're going to paste it over here. You're about to have a really good idea of what your problem is. Paste. All right. Now let's get rid of these rows. We don't need those. But let's get rid of that because we already know now that um, the yellow is after penguin and the white is before penguin. Now, we're about to sort this whole row by what rank we are. So then we can tell which keywords moved up, which word keywords moved down, which don't exist anymore, and all that. But we want to do one more thing. Um, you're just going to have to follow along, because this is not traditional information. Um, we're going to put a function here. And we're going to go with concatenate. This is a, Oh, wait a second. I can't do that yet. I need to put a 1 in here. So you're going to put a 1 in this row. I'll tell you in a minute. You'll see why this makes sense. I know it's painful. All right, so there's a 1. Now, we're going to do the function right here. Where's the function button? Right there. Concatenate. Concatenate, right there. Now, the first one is this, and the second one is the 1. Oops. I got to move to this. Let's see what that did. Nothing. I screwed it up. Let's try it again. How did I screw that up? It's very simple. You might have to scroll down to find concatenate, because I use it. So text 1 is this, and text 2 is this, and then OK. There we go. Now, the difference between this one and this one is that this has a 1 attached to it. Tell you why that's important here in a second. I could tell you now, but it's not going to make any sense. So I'm dragging the little square up to the end of my yellow. Now, every single one of those keywords ends with a one. I, now, <laughs> this is recorded, so you can follow along on the recording, but I am now going to copy this and I am going to paste it right over the top of my yellow. But I'm going to paste special. I only want the values. I don't want the uh, I don't want the formula. I just want the result. So I'm going to delete those. So now I have all of my keywords with a one after it, and in yellow in this column, and my keyword rank in that column. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to sort. There is a header. I'm going to sort by that. By, am I going to do position? Or let's see what happens with position. Nope, we're not going to do position. That doesn't tell us anything. We're going to sort by the word. Oh, we didn't get rid of the thousands, but that's okay. So now we can come down here and look at Superfoods 1 right here. Is that even 10 superfoods? Those didn't even line up. Let's find another one. A list of superfoods and a list of superfoods one. See how they're both 1,000? Doesn't matter. Let's find, let's look it down here. There's one. Alcohol, early pregnancy. OK, look. Before penguin, this particular keyword was number 9.8. So it was 9 on the first page of Google. Now it's 1,000. That means I don't even rank for that keyword anymore. So we are going to subtract that. And that's going to tell us that I moved 990 places. And I didn't really move 990 because we made up the 1,000. Um, but we basically went down 990. So if you can take that particular equation and put it on all of these. Now, you know what we should have done? How come you guys didn't yell that out? Let's make our lives easier. Sort, average position, descending. Let's get rid of all the thousands. Come on. 
because do we really care if it's not showing up it's not showing up but at least they're they're there how many do we have to go down we got to go down forever that's a whole lot of keywords that are no that aren't really bringing any traffic isn't it can I go faster Darren's super excel with he's probably laughing at me because there's probably a super easy way to do this I am but I'm not gonna muddy the waters <laughs> You are laughing at me. All right. So now I got rid of those. That's funny. Sort for penguin. Sending. All right. Now, now we have all our keywords. So look, ten superfoods equal this minus this went down one position. One. So. I know immediately in my panic state that I don't necessarily need to worry about my page called 10 Superfoods that's currently ranked for this. It's not a big deal. Um, alcohol and pregnancy move from 170 to 260. So let's copy that and put it right there. Anti-aging foods went from 150 to 160. Uh, where are we at? Anti-inflammatory went from 46 to 37 got to find the ones that match up. We put a 1 there so that when we did this little equation right here, which is equals this one minus this one, the reason that we have a 1 there is so that this one is always the after penguin. Sometimes if you don't put the 1 there and you resort this, sometimes it's, it's yellow, white, yellow, white, white, yellow, white, yellow. But when you put the 1 there, the, the yellow is always second, so you can do this little equation. See how much easier it is to figure that out? Now, now there's a bunch of keywords on here that I don't care about. Look at this one, antioxidant. That is the kind of a misspelling of antioxidant with a K instead of an X. I might have been getting traffic on page 9 of Google for it, but now I'm on page 10 of Google. Do I want to spend any time worried about that? I don't think so. So after you finish this whole process, and I'm telling you, it takes a, little, it takes a few minutes, although we did narrow that down considerably. Um, you can go through here. Somebody started vacuuming. You can go through here, resort by this column, the change column. Let's put change. And you'll have you'll have your keyword sorted by exactly which keyword it is and how many it went up or down. Because a lot of these went up. Um, here's one antioxidant foods equals this minus this. Look at that, it went up 11 spots in Google. So now I'm on page three of Google instead of page four. So a lot went up, a lot went down. You just have to figure out for yourself which is which. Now let's go back to here. So that's number four, that's just sorting and analyzing. You're trying to figure out what, what are you gonna be panicked about? What matters? So step five is, which keywords actually meant something out of that list? Now that you have this big list sorted, you've got uh, keywords that went from number one to number 600 that were like mainstays. They were very important to you. Um, and you've got keywords like antioxidant, the misspelling of antioxidant that went, maybe they were also on page one and now they're not, but that wasn't bringing much traffic anyway. So, I mean, you, you gotta take the panic state and figure out what am I going to fix specifically? Oh, what did I have there? Oh yeah, not every hand's a winner. I, I said that, I put that there because not every keyword is going to be bringing you money and not every keyword do you need to worry about. A reduction in traffic for keywords that didn't matter is a reduction in traffic, but it's not something that's worth panicking about. Um, now I put freewithmastermind.com slash members on here because in order to figure out whether a keyword actually meant something to you, it would be helpful for you to set up uh, the funnel the goals and funnels in Google Analytics. And in freeweeklymastermind.com slash members, um, we do have a video on how to set up the funnels. Now a funnel is going to tell you when somebody lands on uh, page X, uh, do they get to your money page? Do they sign up for your newsletter? Do they buy your book? Do, you know, whatever it is you're trying to get people to do, um, you can track that in, in the funnel uh, in Google Analytics. So go to free 
www.mastermind.com slash members if you don't know how to do that process. But that is the process that's going to it's going to help you figure out whether your keywords mean anything or not. Now, if you are an impression network person and you're looking for every single tiny little you know person to show up at your site, um, and you know it, it means something, whatever it is, a thousand people, you get eight dollars or sixteen dollars or whatever. Then you know every keyword matters to you. Um, but I'm going to show you how to get some of that traffic back when we go to our offensive study, so you don't have to. You don't have to fret as much. Yeah, it is a problem. It's a huge problem for you. But if that impression network is a huge portion of your income, then we also need to diversify that a little bit because we can't rely 100% on someone else. And right now we're relying on Google's algorithm. So that's there. So what we're going to do now is now that you've figured out how to figure out or how to know which keywords moved, where they went, up or down, um, we're going to figure out how to fix it, how to make them come back, uh, how to make the, how to bring more traffic in, those two things. So the defense is we're going to talk about what Google was going after in the Penguin. We're going to figure out, we're going to show you how to, how to figure out whether you're breaking those rules. And uh, in offense, we're going to show you how to get traffic back that maybe you didn't have before and get traffic back that you had, and we're going to overcome the Penguin. So let's start with defense. Now, the goal of Google Penguin, like the goal of every single algorithm change, is to improve the search results. And even though a lot of us, I mean, I got caught. There was a bunch of traffic that went away. Um, even though we didn't really do anything wrong, Google's search results are actually going to be better in the long term because of the changes they made. And even if you didn't do anything wrong whatsoever, I'm going to show you how some of the thing, how some of the some other people on the planet can make like life difficult for you. For instance, when I was going through my webmaster tools, which I'll show you here in a second, and uh, I I was checking out all the links set to my site because you can see every page that links to your site and what it is. There were many people who just copied and pasted my content directly onto their page, just stole it. So now I've got duplicate content out there. Um, that's not the kind of duplicate content you get with a press release uh, or you get with an AP article. It's definitely just stolen content linking back to my site. And that's, uh, that's not a quality link, which is part of the problem. So we're going to use Webmaster Tools to figure out, are we over-optimized? Because Google was trying to say, look, there are some sites on this planet that are really good, but the site owners aren't good at SEO. So how do we change the algorithm so that the people who are good at SEO aren't getting as much credit and we're going directly at content? So over-optimized page titles um, and, and keyword stuffing, which they kind of got rid of before, they're, they have a new way to look at those things. And we're going to talk about how we need to kind of change the way that we were doing things. Um, we want to look at our, our backlinks, we want to look at our internal site structure. Uh, we want to make sure that that site structure is set up the way Google wants it to be set up. So let's go look at... All right, so Dan, while you're doing that, just got a question here. So are you saying that using legit services like Unique Article Wizard is not good to use now, or are you just saying that, uh, talking about somebody that's just copying and pasting? I'm going to tell you that it's not good to use now. Um, and the reason is, uh, which I use, I, I, you've probably heard me talk about it before, I am a unique Article Wizard fan, but as of the 25th, I, I canceled my subscription because the kind of links that you get from unique Article Wizard aren't quality links. They're not human curated links. They often come from pages that have all kinds of crazy content. Uh, even if, I mean, you put those categories in there, you know, even niche down quite a bit, they're still... They're still coming from crazy pages that have all kinds of external links on them. There's just not a lot of value there, and that's the kind of thing that is uh, making Google re you know, change the way they're doing things. So if you look at links to your site, um, I'll just click on uh, this page. Now, when you click on links to your site, it's going to show you all the pages of your site, and then each one of these will tell you how many incoming links there are to that page. Uh, you want no no if you only have if you have 55 pages on your in your site 
and only three of them show up here, you, only, you keep linking to the home page or something, then you, you already have sort of a problem that got filtered out because Google wants to see, you know, pretty good, uh, pretty good links, pretty good love from the web community for each of your pages because, you know, a web page is a website in Google's world. Um, the internal pages that link to it are counted as, as links and the external pages that link to it are counted as links. So that site structure is going to help determine which of these pages that uh, we get ranked. Now, if we just go here, where was it at? I was looking for some good examples, and then I failed to remember the good examples. Let's see if this is a good example. So here is an easy article. I wrote an, e an article for easy articles, and this particular group, they took the article, and there it is. It's got it's got everything they're supposed to use. They're supposed to, you know, if they're going to take it, they're supposed to take the whole thing. They're supposed to take the links and all that stuff. So this person is following the rules. I was writing an article for Easy and Articles. I followed their rules. Article marketing has always been a, a pretty quality source. Um, but I find in when I look through this Webmaster Tools thing that this particular article gets picked up. I forget how many times it was that I saw it, but it, it was probably 80 different times in different places. So all of those links, they're just really not quality links. It's just copied content. And it's not quite the same as a press release or uh, as an AP article because Google assigns some sort of timing to a press release. They, you know, it stays at the top for like five days. And uh, an AP article stays at the top for five days. Um, so the, the articles from Unique Article Wizard, from Easy Articles, um, you know, those aren't designed like like press releases, so they're supposed to stay out there. Well, now Google sees, you know, 200 of the same article all over the place, and it's not variant. There's no variation. Which one is the one that needs to be indexed? Um, so over time, you take all away all those links because really only one of them matters, and that page doesn't have quite the quality scores it used to have. I think even I, I clicked on no, that was a weird one. That was a, a couple of these were uh, were sites that were. I didn't really even understand. I think this is another one. Get right there. Provided by Digital Camera Times, an article about are there other sources of resveratrol. So, you know, again, Google's going to scan this page, and it just doesn't have the quality that that it likes to see that it's, it's hoping to see in the future. So, all of this stuff, things that we thought we were doing right. Um, but Google's saying, look, I, uh, I'm not sure that I like that anymore. So I could not really find a great example today, even though I did yesterday, where, let's see what this is. I don't even know. Recommended pages. See, what is that? That's nothing. That's a nothing link right there. It's of no value. And I have no control over it. I don't know what it is or where it comes from. Um, so you can go through this whole thing, and here's the part that I'm trying to get to say, um, where did I go? Here, is that is that these problems are, are, are problems. Google's considering them to be, look, your site has got all kinds of crap linking to it. It's just not quality. It's the same thing over and over and over again, all over the place. Uh, there's some variations, but otherwise it's the same. So it's a problem. Now, it's a big problem if that's all your links, if everything that's coming to you is that. Uh, it's not a big problem if that is just a healthy mix of the overall links coming in. That's, you know, if you have 500 links coming in and 400 of them are the same article from Easy Articles, you know, you, you do not have a quality mix of links. There's nothing human about that. There's nothing that screams, yes, this in fact is a page that people should go to it screams, hey, there's an internet marketer working on this page. So so when we get to the offense strategy and we figure out, you know, when we go through these links, you figure out and get a, a pretty good idea of, you know, what percentage of these are bad and what percentage are good, we, we either have to increase the number of incoming links, quality ones, uh, to help offset the bad ones, or we actually have to write websites. we got to ask people to remove, you know, the, the content. And I, and I put this sort of a quote on the on the computer here um, that 
just like Toyota doing recalls, just like factory problems, just like anything else, we've got to reassess. We've got to step back. We're business owners. We've got to take control and realize that we may have to do something. We have to step up and work in order to make things better. Uh, I've already written to a couple websites. Um, I went to betterwhois.com. I looked who it was. I emailed them. I said, here's the page. Could you please remove this? Uh, one was a forum administrator. He wanted to know why, and I told him that I was trying to remove, uh, in this particular forum, they just copied and pasted a page of mine as, as an answer to a question. So I asked him if he could remove that part, um, and he said, why? And I said, well, because of you know X, Y, and Z, I'm trying to overcome the effects of Penguin. And I said, look, if you help me, and I can get this page to move up, and I can show you, you know, I, I got rid of X, Y, Z links, you know, I can provide that to you, and maybe that can help you. So he said, sure, he would take that page down. And then, you know, it's kind of a trade. I told him I'd help him with the information, and he said he'd get rid of it. But like I said, it's going to be work. Now, I don't know if you saw that uh, several years ago, that Randy Pausch guy who, uh, who gave a lecture at, I think it was Pepperdine in California, and he was talking about life. He was talking about trying to work for Disney. He was talking about all the things that he had to go through in life. And knowing that he was going to die and had a bunch of time to think about stuff, he realized that that when you really want something and you go after it, you're going to get it. And the speed bumps are put there to stop the people who don't want it as badly. So he wanted to work at Disney, and they said no, and he did you know seven or eight other things until he could get there and work there. You know, he didn't take no for an answer. He realized that he was the guy and he needed to work there. So I'm telling you that moving forward, no matter what you search for, there is going to be a number one. There's going to be a number two, and there's going to be a number three in Google's results. How you get there is going to be dependent a little bit on how much you want to be there. So if you go through, I mean, if you're sitting there thinking, you know, I didn't do anything, there's nothing wrong, um, and you fill out the form, uh, which I will put, I'll put a link to it in freeweeklymastermind.com in the forum. Uh, there is a form you can fill out that says, I would like to be reconsidered. But there's going to be 60,000 people that are going to fill out that form and say, look, I did nothing wrong. I need to be reconsidered. You need to go through your links, and you need to put in your letter, I did X, Y, Z, and I changed this, and I changed that, and I would like to be reconsidered. Because there's going to be 60,000, 70,000, a million people who are going to say, look, I need to be reconsidered. So, I mean, show show them if in fact they're going to do anything to help you that you've done something I went I saw I saw that you know this easy article got reprinted 58 times I can't do anything about it I can't get it on these websites I can't get it off um, or I tried and I would like to be reconsidered because I, I haven't done anything that's bad maybe maybe you'll stand a chance so those are the things to do I mean that's how we're going to figure out exactly what it is that caused the problem Oh, I didn't show you a couple other things on there that will make this even easier. So you're going to go through here. Go through your links. Figure out, I mean, are you doing something that's bad? Uh, are there links coming from places that you can get rid of? If you can, get rid of them. But there's also some other stuff in here that is useful. Um, sitemaps. And in fact, if you're going to fill out that form, make sure you reference these things. HTML improvements. Look at this. Duplicate meta descriptions. According to them, I have four duplicate meta, de meta descriptions on these pages. Two pages, two pages. So I need to go to those pages, and I need to change the, the meta description so they're not duplicated. I don't know why they're duplicated, but apparently they are. Um, what else does it say? Short meta descriptions. Apparently there's 13 of them that aren't long enough. They need to be, what, at least 80 characters. So apparently these are too small. Um, so we'll make that change. Duplicate title tags. Looks like the same pages as the meta descriptions. In fact, those are, that's interesting, those are uh, from the newsletter that I send out. Maybe that's why they got overlooked. So are those. So i got to get those fixed. So apparently that's a template I'm using, and when I fill out the template, I'm not changing the title tags because I haven't been thinking in my head that this is SEO. I've been thinking I'm emailing it. Well, apparently Google can find them and uh, saying that I have a problem. So go through here in Webmaster Tools and fix. Fix all the stuff. I mean, make this perfect. Uh, the other day I had um, did I have configuration. Oh, I had health. I had crawl errors. 
so the other day I had 20 crawl errors, and I just had to go uh, look at the pages. A couple of the pages um, were off-site. They weren't even mine. They were just some something else. It was bizarre why they were on there. And I had to press this button. I had to click here and then press this button, mark as fixed. So it's been a week now, so apparently that got fixed. But there are still four errors, 404 codes. So I need to go through there and figure out why those have 404 codes, and I need to fix them. When they're fixed, I need to write mark as fixed. Um, there's nothing to do there. I will say that if you click on this content keywords and your main themes is not showing up right here, like this is my main theme, Resveratrol, if, if your main theme is not number one, then you have a different, I mean, you have another problem altogether, and that is your uh, site structure isn't built correctly. And it has site maps. So make sure make sure all this stuff is good before you say, "Look, Google, I fixed all my things. Please, uh, please make sure that I'm okay. Please let me back into the results." So, so that's what you did. You went through. Uh, you figured all that stuff out. You fixed it as much as you can. And I mean, make it work for yourself. Make it seem like work because it should be. You need to be contacting webmasters and say, "Look, please remove that link." And you need to do stuff that other people that you're competing against are not doing. And even if you don't get, you know, if Google doesn't send you a note that says, yes, we re-looked at your site and you're going to go back up, just doing those things are naturally going to move you up. Because, as this says, Google always wants the most relevant results. The day that people realize that Google's results are just crap is the day they start moving back to Bing and Yahoo and the Google world collapses. So they have to continue to outsmart internet marketers and try to continue to bring relevant information to their audience. In fact, they don't even like to have your keywords in your domain as much anymore. Like NashvilleDentist.com is not going to do nearly as well as DennisJNolan.com, Dennis in Nashville. So remember, they're, they're trying to stay ahead of us, and we are trying to catch up and sort of keep ahead. So in the meantime, while you are, while you are figuring this out, and I'm going to show you one more thing. I want you to go to uh, google.com slash, oops, slash AdWords. Now I put on there, are you the preeminent expert in your field? Hopefully that is your goal. Um, when you are the preeminent expert, it's very hard for Google to deny you. This is one of the keywords that I have seen where the preeminent experts actually show up. So the contextual targeting tool is a is a Google AdWords tool to help people who are advertising uh, Google AdWords. <laughs> and so when you search for a keyword, it actually tells you uh, related keywords, things they want you to bid on as an advertiser because these are completely related. And as you can see, number four is Gary Craig. That's a human. I mean, it's an individual, and according in, according to Google, he is important in the EFT tapping world because he is a related keyword, his name. He's, he's everywhere in the EFT world that Google's, his, Google's algorithm has picked that up, picked his name up as something that's related to that field. He is basically a preeminent expert in his field, and because of that, he's showing up there. Are you showing up there? That's my question. Uh, in your field, and some of them, you know, we're Internet marketing, we're never going to show up there. You know, Chris Brogan might get to the top at some point, or Frank Kern, um, but we're not in enough places. Our name's not mentioned on, on enough sites that when Google is uh, scanning all these sites, our name is not popping up. So we need to work on that. We need to become the preeminent expert in your field. Now, Google's search results have three legs. One of those is social media. One of those is, are people coming from the social sites? Are they commenting? Are they using the keywords when they comment? Uh, are they are they putting links to you on Twitter? Are they linking to you on Facebook? Are they linking to you on Pinterest? I mean, is there that that third leg of the search results or the search engine algorithm is is the human one? And that is, are humans finding the site and are humans liking it? So let's count that. Now, if we want to overcome Google Penguin, let us let's increase our social media. Let's increase our interaction on Facebook. Let's increase our interaction on Twitter. Let's get more and more people talking about our site. Now, I will show you that uh, I wrote an article called Make Photos Go Viral on Pinterest at lettersfromdan.com. 
about how to utilize the power of Pinterest uh, to move yourself up. And I will tell you that this particular picture right here, 101 gift, Easter basket gift ideas, and all of these right here, look at this, 101 Easter basket gift ideas. Now, right before Easter, Jessica posted this, we're talking like 10 days, and since then she has received 35,000 repins. That's 35,000 links back to this page from social media. Now, this page is not going away in terms of, of the penguin because the social side is taking a huge chunk of that. Uh, and if you look for Easter basket ideas, right now it's number one, 35,000 repins. Now, this whole, this whole Easter thing has changed a little bit because Easter's gone away and it's got that press release mentality. But this one still stayed there because of those 35,000 repins. Look at that, 35,000. So if you want to see some examples of how, how to do that, here's another example here. Each of these gets 12 to 15,000 repins. Um, then go, go check out the article and make sure that you are doing what you need to be doing on Pinterest. Here's that, here's that page. So that look at that, there's 1,120. And this doesn't even tell you the total. This just tells you how many times this one got repinned. If somebody else pinned it, then, and that one has 443 repins, it's not going to show up on this one because somebody else did it on their account. They were the originator. So each one of these is 12 to 15,000 times. Um, and they all have, I think you can tell just by looking at it, they all have something similar. Uh, but there are some rules to the similar part you need to look at. Um, so make sure, that, make sure that we're doing that. Um, creating new silos. Now let's talk about the structure of your site. The structure of your site, no matter what site it is, whether it's a blog, whether it's a niche site, well, even if it's a store, should be set up the way Google best understands it, and that is in a, I guess you would call it a pyramid of silos. Your domain, your, your main page uh, needs to be at the top, and underneath that are the pages in your navigation bar. Those are your tier two pages. So. If you're, and the reason that you want them in your navigation bar is because everything else should should link back to your tier two pages, and your tier two pages need to link back to your home page. So, if your site is happens to be a, a what would be a good one about dog training, I guess is good dogtraining.com, and then you're going to have uh, a category about puppy dog training, and you're going to have a category about. Uh, Dog incontinence happens to be a big problem. Dogs that can't, that aren't, can't hold their urine anymore. They're too old or something. So how to train them to, you know, do whatever they do. Uh, you could have dog potty training. You could have that. Those kinds of things need to be in your sidebar. Those are your main pages, your main content. Those are the sections that you have divided your site into. Now, underneath and linking to the, the potty training for dogs needs to be all kinds of articles about potty training for dogs. You need to support that potty training for dogs page. So it needs to, as the top tier goes down, the base needs to get wider and wider. And Google sees that the most number of links, incoming links, are going to your home page. The second most incoming links from your site are going to your tier two pages. And your final, your last pages, some of them don't even have incoming links, they have external links. So if your site isn't set up like that, it's not designed. I mean, if every single page is available from your homepage, then you're not you're not showing Google how your site is structured. You're not giving it a framework in order to understand it. If supporting pages link to supporting pages, then it can see. Oh, look at this! All of these have to do with potty training. Excellent. And all these over here happen to do with old dog training. And all these over here have to do with uh, training dogs for the blind. But if the potty training and the blind dog training and the incontinence training, they're all available on the same page, you're not showing Google uh, exactly how to view your site. You're not giving it some sort of relevance just through the internal links alone. So from an offensive standpoint, you can go look at your site. You can change the links around. You can change your navigation. Uh, you can make sure that each page has supporting pages linked to it. You can make sure that pages that totally aren't related aren't linked together. They need to go first back up to the Tier 2 page and then kind of over to the other one to get where they want to go, but otherwise, if somebody's searching for dog incontinence, they're not necessarily getting to the uh, training dogs for the blind. It's not helpful for Google to understand your site, and it's not helpful for the end user. 
So that would be number 11, creating new supporting content. Find out, you know, restructure your site and then start adding articles to support the keywords that, that got hit. So I think what was one of mine, 10 superfoods? So I need to make sure that on my resveratrol site that the 10 superfood section uh, is all connected together and that I start writing new articles about 10 superfoods. I need to continually prove to Google that, that page is worth it. I'm also playing defense. I'm also going to see, you know, what's what are the backlinks to that page? I'm trying to solve that particular problem. I'm going to look at uh, the title tags and meta tags and make sure that uh, 10 superfoods isn't in there 100 times. You know, that's a reasonable amount of times. And you might want to, because it's a site-by-site -site thing, you might actually want to go look at the, the pages that didn't get bumped by Google and compare them to your own pages that did get bumped. What's different? What is What about your keyword density? Did it like it on this page and not like it on that? Is there something different about them? Uh, or is your title tag called 10 superfoods slash 10 superfoods? Or, uh, and the other one is called 10 of the greatest superfoods. And the one that's more human sounding didn't get bumped and the one that's over optimized did. Uh, those are things that you need to do. Now, creating new silos. That is, uh, when you use the, let me go back to that real quick. When you use the AdWords, was that on here? Here, let's see this, super foods. When you're using the contextual targeting tool, um, and Google is telling you through this tool, which is still loading, 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 is telling you that superfoods, food lists, green food, healthy food, recipes, super diet, weight loss, it's telling you that these are all related foods that support superfoods. Now, I'm saying go create new silos. So if I do not have a silo on recipes, if I don't even have an entire, I don't have a section on superfood recipes, and Google is saying right here that superfood recipes are supporting the term keywords, then I need to go out there and I need to create a superfoods recipe section on my site. I need to build it out. I need to link it back up to the superfoods page so that I continue to build quality content and show Google that, look, I've got all the keywords that you need. Uh, I got them all related and uh, I'm continuing to move forward despite the setback. Start a podcast. Now this goes back to number eight. Are you the preeminent expert in your field? Um, start a podcast. Get on SlideShare. Make sure that you dominate there. Get on Goodreads.com. You know, make sure you you're commenting on all the books in your niche. Uh, make sure that you have a a channel on YouTube and your videos are linked back and they're also embedded on your site. Show that you know in all realms of the internet you are the dominant player. Um, I mean, play offense. Run the show. Show them that you are relevant and that your site, despite maybe having some extra backlinks or despite not even knowing what the problem is, if there even was a problem, uh, show them that, you know, you're moving forward, you're still dominating, people are still coming, uh, people are commenting on your YouTube videos, you know, increase the engagement, uh, and join new communities, go to LinkedIn groups, go to Flickr groups, uh, join new ones that are related to your niche, you know, get some links coming back to your stuff. Show them again that you are the preeminent leader, expert in your field. Do do do. So then finally, have a marketing plan. This is number 15 in our, oh, we, this is a 15-step marketing plan, or 15-step recovery plan? How sad is that? I told you it was 13. So have a marketing plan. I don't know if you've been to marketingcalendarblueprint.com. It's, uh, it's pretty much our planning tool. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're relevant when you need to be relevant. So uh, if your site is showing Valentine's Day ideas on February 16th, then you did not have a marketing plan because nobody searches for Valentine's Day after February 14th. You can go to google.com slash trends and you can see that search line plummet faster than a missile the day of Valentine's Day. The next day, nobody searches for it. Nothing. There's a few repins on Pinterest, but that's it. And when there's still stuff showing up on your site the day after and you get crawled, you, you basically have stuff that's no longer relevant, and the algorithm knows it's no longer relevant. So in order to avoid that from happening is you have to have a marketing plan. You need to know when does the search peak, when do certain, you know, when do parts of search peak, and when do the next thing start? What is it that I'm going to be talking about after Valentine's Day so that on February 15th it's already up there? And what is it? What am I working towards? Is it Mother's Day? Am I already starting to talk about that? I'll make sure it's there. 
have your complete marketing plan worked out. Now, from a search engine uh, standpoint, you know those those uh, AP articles and press releases, they make it to the top of the search results the day that those things are important. So, uh, you know, the day Michael Jackson died, as soon as somebody wrote that press release, it's at the top. It's not that the michaeljackson.net that's been around for 10 years at the top. It's the press release that's at the top. So you need to have some of that press release strategy. You need to figure out where do you know what do I need to be talking about and when. Now, from a user standpoint, from keeping your community involved and moving your community from one thing to the next, uh, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about the Bachelor Show before. You, you also need to have a marketing plan because you need to be selling or pre-selling what you're going to be talking about tomorrow to your audience today. So they're already excited about it. So they're already primed and ready to link to your pages when those pages come up. If you do not have a marketing plan, then this is not stuff that you're going to be able to do. Um, if you don't know the day after you know, Valentine's Day that you are totally gearing up for a grilling season and you're going to be doing all kinds of stuff about you know, spring grilling, grilling in the rain, uh, you know, all the crazy stuff that you can do as soon as the snow melts, uh, you're just not going to be ready. Your site's going to lose relevance. So continue to pounce on relevance, continue to pounce on press release strategy, um, and be exactly where you need to be. The other benefit of having a marketing plan, this has nothing to do with Penguin or with Google, is that is that you can totally dominate for Thanksgiving and Christmas without being there. You can enjoy your family. I mean, you can go on vacation. You can automate all those things that you know you need to do ahead of time if you have some sort of a strategy. Now, that strategy, that strategy is going to help you overcome the results of Penguin because people are going to instantly be more involved with your site when they see that you're totally on top of things. And those of you who are already doing that and doing a very good job, as I can see, I know several of the sites that are uh, listening tonight, um, you, you know, th those those people know that as soon as they post something that's that's cool and relevant the day after Valentine's Day, they're already getting comments. and Somebody else is still stumbling. They didn't, maybe they didn't update or they just put a random post up. So keep an eye on exactly what it is you're doing. Um, feel free to go to uh, marketingcalendarblueprint.com. Um, that particular product is uh, it's chock full of, of everything that you'd want to know, how to use Google Trends um, to see exactly when people are searching for things, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how to use the, the Hallmark holiday calendar, like today is Peter Pan Day, I believe, is how to use that in your social media efforts, how to put that right into your schedule, how to make sure that you're, you know, if, if for some reason that you were, your site is about musicals, I mean, Peter Pan Day is kind of... Uh, you know, that might be interesting to your audience. You know, if it's resveratrol and superfoods, I think my audience could care less. But, you know, how do you harness that information and use it for your own good? So, Darren, did we have any other questions before I continue? Uh, let's see, there's a couple here. Jeff says, uh, speaking of duplicate content, in my webmaster tools, they indexed a blog twice, and I don't know how to fix it. And he shows kid-exercise and kids dash exercise with a slash at the end. Is that something because of permalinks or something like that? Yeah, uh, that looks to me like the second one is misspelled. I don't know if it's misspelled because you misspelled it when you were typing it into this thing or if it's misspelled because you actually have two pages. Yeah, because you have kids dash exercise and then kids dash exercise without the R listed there, but that could be a typo. Yeah, So he misspelled it. Mm -hmm. Well, so you you know there is a part in Google Webmaster Tools, and I can email you later, Jeff. I'll, I'll have to look for it, but you can tell Google Webmaster Tools that uh, page A is being indexed two other times, you know, some with the www and some with the slash at the end, um, and you can fix that <coughs> inside Webmaster Tools. Moscato Day. Yummy, yummy. All right, so let's see... If what else did I have? Did I have anything else open? No, we did that. We did that. Let me see if I can find that while you're... Oh, I don't have Google Webmaster Tools open, do I? So, where is that at? Um, not Labs. Nope, 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 nope. You 
could try that too. You could remove that URL from your site, the one with the uh, whichever one you don't want, so you don't have duplicate. There's the remove URLs, but there's another place on here. I'm trying to think about what it was. Configuration. No, no, no. No. You remember where it is? You remember seeing that too? No, it's been a long, long time. Yeah, I'm looking. Well, here's one of those places. Um, here's where you can tell it whether you're uh, intending to be the www or, in, or you're not. Uh, but there's another place. I think maybe it is the URL. Remove the URL, and you can remove that one with the uh, with the, the slash at the end of it. But one of the things that you're going to want to do before that is you're going to want to go to site links. Wait, wait, wait. Where was that? Traffic links to your site. And you're going to want to go in here, and you're going to want to see how people are linking to your page. That might be the problem. Is there any? Oh, great. So, Control F is find res resveratrol. Okay, so here, see how they have the www. Um, this particular page is linking to me with that. So that page page with the www is getting the juice not the page without the www um, and let me let me expound upon that a little bit every single URL is a new page so with the www is a page without it is a page those are totally separate pages even though they're exactly the same that goes for the same thing as uh, benefits of resveratrol.com slash tag slash superfoods if you put a tag on your site, you tag one of your articles with like 10 different words, then that means there's going to be a page set up for each one of those tags. There's going to be a page set up for super. There's going to be a page set up for foods. There's going to be a page set up for health. There's going to be a page set up for resveratrol. All the different tags that I would put on that page, they have separate websites, basically separate websites. Now, this is the problem with duplicate content. This is the problem with tags and categories on your, on your site. So, now, one of those pages is going to get indexed and cached. One of them. Not all of them. One of them. If you have a campaign on Facebook or Twitter or you use Ping FM and you send all your links out and you link to the main article, so you link to resveratrol.com slash article one, that's your main thing. You're telling everyone to go to that page and people go to it. But Google indexes resveratrol.com tag superfoods tag article one. So it is indexing the tag page. Now that's the page that needs the juice. That's the page that's going to make it up the top of the search engine. Now if all of the incoming links are going to the other page and the other page is not indexed and cached, then it's not going to make it to the top. So some people find they get a lot of benefit from tags because their pages get found more quickly. Other people find that they end up with a bunch of li a links to page X but page Y is the one that needs all the links going to it. They get everything going to the www, and nothing is going to the one without www. So you, you kind of have to go through before you decide, before you pick on that particular question, whether you're going to say you know, which one it is. You need to figure out how are people linking to me. Which of these has the most? What's this one? Oh, look at this. This is a totally worthless link. Look at that. I have stupid links. Now, can I write them and ask them to remove this page? I do not know. I may have to try that. How do you get rid of that? So there was another useless incoming link, Dr. Gold Wellness. How is this guy linking to my page? I don't even see a link on there, do you? Alt F. Maybe that Oops. resveratrol right there? Third line. You see it. Oh, there it is. I need to get rid of this. There it is. Benefits of All right. So the same way that last one did. I guess that makes sense because that's what the page is. So let's do this. Let's go back to here more. Let's see. Are there any of these that have a slash? See, here is www benefits with the slash. Do any of the other ones have a slash? No, none of the other ones do so far. Hey, 
Hey, look at that. So far, so good. I got this set up right. Some of these might have a slash at the end. There's a PDF. See, that shouldn't even be indexed. So some of those things I got to fix on my own. Some of these, you know, some people might even link to that without the .html. I'm not sure if that was if that's possible or not, but I think it would just go to a it would just go to a 404 page at that point. But some of these have almost no links to them. So if I want to play offense, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to talk about Latin superfoods because there's only one link coming to it, and it's probably a link from one of these other pages. So let's move that up. Now, if you take this list with your incoming links and you compare it to this list, this right here, antioxidant foods, has went down 19 points. Can we find antioxidant foods? That would be the question. How quickly can we on this call? Do I even have one called antioxidant foods? I don't remember. Antioxidant facts. Beats me. I do not have one called antioxidant foods. I think I got something called foods high in antioxidants, but I don't think antioxidant foods. So anyway, my question would be, in order to recover from a 19-point deficit, that I had before, what is it that I need to do? Now, the only way you're going to know that is if you go through this process of figuring out which keywords went down and which keywords went up. I'm, I'm not going to be working. See, here's antioxidant. Oh, here's antioxidants foods. That's the one that went up because probably nobody's optimized for that. And I probably am not either. Antioxidant foods went down. So I need to go back over. Where is that page at? And find the page that it goes to and figure out, well, if it only has one or two incoming links, then I, you know, at least I should go cr create some links, create a hub page, write some articles about antioxidant foods, and link them back. Um, you know, quality stuff, because you can't just do 300-word articles now. Now you need, you know, you need four or five paragraphs to prove that that page is worthy, worthy of standing on its own. Uh, and then link that back to my page so that it has more than three incoming links. That would be, you know, <laughs> that would be a good first step to take. I can't tell you how valuable this page is right here. And I will tell you that I, I did one on my other computer, and I did not bring it because I wanted to show you the process. But going through here and, uh, what is this, Control-C, and going through here and doing that for each one of these so you can see whether it moved up and down is really going to be helpful, especially after you sort it. And then all you have are are the keyword, the after, that's the new position, and how many it moves. When you resort it just by column C, by the change, then all these white ones obviously go away because there's going to be nothing in this space right here. There'll be nothing in those. So then you just end up with yellow, which is the after. That's the new keyword. That's where you are. And you know how many it moved. And you can start working on that. Uh, if you have Market Samurai uh, or some of those other services, uh, you can actually track that. You can plug that stuff in. You can track your movement. You can uh, add an article. You can start talking about it on Twitter. You can create an, you know, you can get BlogFrog or go to BlogFrog and start talking about that page on, you know, somebody else who's talking about Latin superfoods today, uh, and watch it move back up. And it's only going to move back up with more, more stuff to prove that it's valuable, or removing bad stuff that makes it not valuable. There's negative five. I don't think this one is the same thing because that has a question mark. Now, basil herbs, basil herb one, basil herb. So that one moved up nine pages. That's pretty good. Look at that. That moved up 18 pages. Down 5.2. Down 0.9. So, you know, some of these are going to move down a lot. Look at that. That was a big one for me, blueberry health benefits. That's one of my mains. So I have to go work on that. Now, without doing this exercise, I definitely would not have figured out which one is which, and I'd be still be in panic mode. Um, so let's go back up here. Let's data sort. Let's sort by change, ascending. Now I can see, look at that. Those are the keywords that I need to work on. Where's the ones that were positive? Or maybe I didn't I didn't do something right, but that's all right. So here's all the negatives. Oh, there's some positives in the middle. Does it not understand negatives and positives? How could that be? Dan, what did I do wrong? I didn't see what you How did. How does it there. not know negatives? 
I, I didn't see what you had done. I'm sorting it right now by this column. Uh -huh. Look at that, negative, negative, positive, 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 negative, positive, positive, negative. Is there something else you got to do with negative numbers? Uh, oh, I know what I did. You know what I did? You can't make this mistake that I just made. So, here's the mistake. As soon as you sort this, this is a dynamic equation. So, once you sort it, this is going to sub is going to be the difference between whatever is up above it one and below it one. So, I think that I need to do how do I do that? So, oh, you know what I need to do. Oh, you need to do one more thing. So, after you deal with this equation, you need to copy and you need to paste special and you need to paste the values. That's what you need to do. Then you have to delete this. So now I can sort. Did I do that right? Column C. There you go. When it was, it, it, it can't sort an equation. That's what the problem was. So now we made it not an equation. We pasted just the value. So there, alcohol and pregnancy, I moved down 90. Antioxidant foods, I moved down 19. 19 is huge. I mean, that's a big number. Especially if this number used to be uh, like 19. It used to be number one, now it's 19. You went from page one to the very last one on page two. It's a huge traffic drop. These ones went up. I think A number five, antioxidant, that should be like your yep. gamer name. You know, it sounds really... Oh yeah, that is good. Antioxidant one. <laughs> That, that does rock right there. So if any if you get anything out of this, you need to do this exercise and figure out exactly which keywords changed so you know what to panic about. If you're an impression network, you know, we just need to start powering up social media and those other things to get back to where you were. I would say go look at um, go look at this article right here on how to make your pictures go viral and spend some time on Pinterest. There's a huge amount of traffic there. You can really do good things. Uh, and, and promote them on your site. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, with Young House Love site. This site gets 100,000 people a day. Or even more sometimes. So anyway, this site gets, look at that. They have 230 comments on this blog post. So this blog post is about, even though they have silly pictures, is about their Pinterest challenge. So what they're doing is they're leveraging their audience to really grow their Pinterest. I mean, she has 500,000 followers on Pinterest. So they're leveraging their audience to grow Pinterest. That means all of those people repinning or following her, it means that many more people are going to see it and they're going to she's, you know, she's really going to grow and obviously she has. I think she's only uh let's go look, but I'm pretty sure they've only pinned like 500 things. How many things? They've pinned 579 things. They have 476,000 followers. So look at that. They've got, what, five, six boards? So obviously the strategy isn't, you know, pin the heck out of everything. Wait, where is that? I have 1,400 pins and 400 followers. So leverage, leverage. Use your crowd. Take advantage of it. Grow your traffic back to where it was on your own, just like uh, Jessica did with this, with this particular image right here. Talk about timing. You know, marketing calendar blueprint is why you need that right there. You need to know that two weeks before Thanksgiving, you're going to be writing 101 Thanksgiving centerpiece ideas. You're going to have the picture ready because you don't want to do that during Thanksgiving. It's too crazy. And you're going to have that automatically pinned using Pinterly. So you're done today. It's totally done. You don't want to pin that today because nobody's repinning that till November. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people make the you mistake, to... you know, the th of thinking they don't really need a marketing calendar because you know they know the big holidays, right? Christmas, Thanksgiving, all that. But oh yeah, uh, like last weekend was Cinco de Mayo, and that's one of those ones that I never realized it until like the fourth. Like oh, tomorrow's you know some sort of a holiday basically, but it's not one of those mm -hmm. big ones that's anchored in your brain to uh, think about all the time. So uh, you know, even more than 
you know, holidays are good to think about, but think about all the other things. Like if you're in the education niche, I mean, the Scripps Howard Spelling Bee, and that comes on during the year. That's worthy of talking about and getting excited and getting your audience excited about having, you know, dinner spelling bees with the families and stuff and doing spelling bees uh, in a podcast where they got to go to a chat session to spell it, you know, or something like that. Um, this, if you're in the horse niche, knowing that the Kentucky Derby was last weekend, you know, taking advantage of those popular events, like Darren said, Cinco de Mayo, that you just don't think about. Yep. Um, you need all of that. So we've got two quick questions, questions about as recovering. We, yeah, well, we got two quick questions as we wrap up here. Um, Crystal's right. not a question, but she wants to know, she wants your autograph and to be a roadie. So uh, we oh, have cool. to take it on tour. Uh, Tanya uh, says she's got thousands of links to her from content for reprint dot com, but has a my uh, MySQL database error. That's probably just an issue on their their end, Tanya. Um, they probably crashed their database um, and I would probably don't it. even know about it. So. Uh, and then Mary asks, would you clarify which time frames you are comparing on that report? So I went to the Google Webmaster Tools and I compared, um, where is that at? Dashboard maybe? I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. We were doing traffic search queries. That's what we were doing. And I picked, uh, well, now it's messed up, but before I had April 9th to the 13th. Whoops. April 9th to April, that doesn't matter, 16th. No, no, that's May. That's why that's a problem. I think we had the 13th. We had one week before, and then I compared that to the 25th to the 2nd or 3rd. And I don't think it matters so much. I mean, you could probably just do one day if you want. You just want to know what the position of your keyword is. But I, I picked five days. I gave it a five-day average for both. So I got a week after and a week before. Does that answer that? Yeah, I think so. That makes sense. Uh, any other questions? Was that helpful? Was it not helpful? Were there things that you were looking for that you didn't get? Or, or you feel like you're still behind the eight ball? Um, we can talk more on Free Weekly Mastermind this week. Well, I, um, At least I, put in there whether it was... Go ahead. I think it's Sorry. useful just to, to, to see that information of knowing where you were before and after. Most people don't know how to go look that information up and be able to figure out, am I going up or down? They generally just look at the top line, which is I got X visitors today and I have X plus or minus the next day. And um, so I think that's really that's really valuable stuff. And that's going to lead people to uh, offensively attack and get better traffic because of that knowledge. So, you know, props to you. Well, you know, what most people do not do on uh, webinars is micro. It's all a bunch of, uh, this is how great it is, this is how great it's going to be, and then go buy this Recover from Google Penguin product. But yeah. for Weekly Mastermind, we do as much micro as possible. Well, I think we, we're big fans, and we I think we've said it every week now um, in different ways, is that free has two, uh, two E's in it. That... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that we're a big fan of knowing your numbers and being able to uh, know where you came from and and um, where you've been. So if you would, we would appreciate it um, if you could head over to freewithinmastermind.com, which, as you know, is a Facebook group uh, that we had redirected. And I encourage everyone to get a domain name for things that are important to them and redirect it, including if you have an ebook on Amazon. Do not make people go search for it. Tell them to go to myebook.com and have it redirect to your ebook on Amazon. Uh, if you would go in there and t let us know whether that was helpful, tell people to go watch the replay. The replay is always at freeweeklymastermind.com slash members. Uh, all our replays are in there. We do have uh, premium content. We have a 10-minute traffic tip series where we interview uh, website owners who get a lot of traffic about exactly what it is that they do. Um, I think we interviewed uh, the guy from the shoe game. He gets 70000 a day. Um, we got uh, J.D. Roth, which is, oh, Crystal, put in there what his site is. It's always backwards of what I think it is. It's such a clever name. Man, I can't think of it. Um, he's got like a Dave Ramsey-style site. GetRichSlowly.org. Yes. 
That is it. Get rich slowly. See why it's backwards to me? I'm almost thinking quickly. But because he's a Dave Ramsey kind of guy. He knows how to he knows how to you know, pile your money up. Um we got a bunch of interviews in there that are uh, really helpful. Otherwise, we appreciate your comments, your questions. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you, your panic is over and you figure out, yes, I can go figure out exactly which keywords are destroying my traffic and whether or not I care. Um, if you don't care, I mean, you don't have a problem. It just sucks that you have less traffic, that's all. But if it wasn't making you any money, it just sucks because traffic's fun to build and it's never good to go backwards. But, you know, keep plowing ahead. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Uh, everybody have a great evening. Yeah, appreciate everyone coming.